What we have here is my new toy. It is a Nikon research grade phase contrast microscope. Uh, it's got two turrets. It's possible to look at 400 times and 1,000 times power. Uh, there's a camera mounted on the top with a, a flat screen digital display so patients can see exactly what I see. And we use this technology to diagnose risk assessment with the biofilm a patient has in their mouth. So what we're looking at here is uh, a biofilm taken from a patient's mouth at a thousand power and you can see we have all sorts of stuff here organized biofilm and um, in this water channel you have some free-floating spirochetes of different lengths and thicknesses and motility you also have some rods and some cocci that you can see uh, coming up here in the middle top, you can see some spirochetes that are ganging up on a, a what's left over of a dead PMN cell. Uh, all sorts of movement going on in this biofilm as we got to move around. And uh, well, let me see if uh, up at the top you can see just the corner. I'll move this up a little bit, see if we can't uh, see a little bit better, clearer picture of a trilobe nucleus PMN. These guys have a life cycle of about three days. You can see the cytoplasmic granules that are moving around. That helps dissolve any bacteria that they ingest. Helps keep us healthy. And this person's definitely infected. So laser therapy is recommended for the patient. Um, she decides she doesn't want to do laser therapy quite yet, but wants to go ahead and see if she can kind of control this on her own with better oral hygiene and uh, what we see here is a result of that don't see a lot of spirochetes per se but um, when you look at this you see just white blood cells that are too numerous to count and so you know that even though uh, active spirochetes swimming around in this particular sample uh, isn't apparent that the infection is still going on and so we say okay well I'd like for you to stop using the baking soda and just go back to using the oral care products that you did have and see what transpires then so she comes back in less than 24 hours we take a slide sample on her as she's gone back to the regular home care she had before she stopped the baking soda and you can see the spirochetes appeared to be conquered. They have indeed returned. Um, you have different motility, different thicknesses, different, uh, different links, different coils, all sorts of infection going on here. Uh, PMNs are again trying to mount a response. They're under attack by the spirochetes as you can see and we're um, moving over the slide as far as numbers go there are definitely more spirochetes than there are white blood cells to fight the infection so this is the same slide I increased to a thousand power here you can see a PMN that's got two of the spore forms uh, they look like clear vacuoles in it that's how the spirochete uh, manages to avoid uh, our immune our immune system here's another PMN that's got plenty of spores in it looks like it's not a lot of motility going on not a lot of movement looks like it's about ready to die so the patient wanted one last opportunity to try some oil pulling periosciences um, go back to the baking soda use irrigators and basically well, what you see is the spirochetes on this slide look more agitated than they did on previous slides. Um, you still have uh, various types of sizes and tightness of coils and whatnot um, going up to a thousand power. Um, you see these guys look like, um, um, again, just trying to organize an attack on, on cells. So same slide here. I'm uh, um, taking a closer look at this group of cells here. These are actually trichomonads um, that are clustered together and they're usually not like this. They're more found um, 
by themselves. So after exhausting everything, the patient decides to move forward and opts for a laser treatment. You can see the tissues don't look too bad, um, but um, here I'm just basically de-epithelializing the crest of the, the sulcus. I'm doing this two to three millimeters around the neck of each tooth to make sure as the sulcus heals that it's it's bringing in um, uh, all fresh new tissue and um, anything embedded into this tissue is going to be evaporated. So we use a, a band of about two to three millimeters around each of the necks of the teeth that we're treating. For the purposes of this video I'm just going to be treating the lower right quadrant uh, and the posterior uh, on the buckle but uh, the reality is we'll be doing this on the whole mouth and then we're going to insert the tip here into the sulcus and very slowly move the handpiece around the sulcus while we're engaging the CO2 laser. Uh, I'm using a CO2 laser from Light Scalpel at uh, 10.6 microns and um, uh, you get a little tissue that clogs the t uh, tip and so your assistant uses a damp gauze to keep that clear for you. Again, we're not in any big hurry. We want to transfer as much energy as we can into the sulcus to just basically evaporate um, anything biologic in the sulcus of these teeth. The CO2 laser is a soft tissue laser only. It's not going to damage the tooth or it's not going to gouge the bone. It's not going to do anything to the um, any of the uh, dental work that she's got. And so we're just taking our time, letting the laser do the work for us. And of course, since we have a microscope, we're going to be verifying our results afterwards. And um, I'll use a Profijet to uh, clean up the tissue tags and get rid of all of that and sell debris from the sulcus so we can heal very nicely and quickly. And again, you just repeat the procedure uh, that I just showed you for the rest of the mouth and, um, and um, then wait for things to heal. So here we are back at the phase contrast microscope confirming our results. You can see that there's a little brownian motion here of um, some little um, super gingival plaque remnants, um, but no spirochetes. You see just a, a couple of just obliterated um, tissues from the laser. You can see some uh, red blood cells, um, but you see no spirochetes. You see no trichomonads. And as we're kind of going over this slide, there's nothing that remotely looks like a spirochete moving. Uh, no trichomonads, no high mo motility bacteria of any kind. Just um, um, very little movement. This patient has confirmed that uh, we had a very good um, session and, and kill ratio.